men like Gresham Macon uh, in previous generations were quite right that we were not dealing with one issue that people take different views on, wh- however serious or not you think that is. Mm. We were actually dealing with a, a religion where everything is systematically, organically related. And when you pull on one thread, inevitably, everything else collapses around it. This is very common in the university that university faculties project themselves as the universal scientific conclusion. And they just ignore the larger reality uh, socially uh, and historically of the church. You are by divine decree whatever you feel like and you are to chastise anyone that denies your truth. So the latter view effectively creates a God in our own image. Christian friends, Afrikaans and English, you are so welcome at our inaugural conference of the Institute for Reformation in South Africa, uh, hosted here in lovely Stellenbosch, uh, founded in 1679, if I'm not mistaken. We are welcoming our international guests. Good day, my English friends. It is almost Christmas 2023, and we want to say thank you to God for His grace and His mercy for bringing us back to South Africa after almost 15 years. And I just want to finish this year by saying thank you to my English friends who supported us, who prayed for us, and want to ask you to continue to do so. And I just want to sort of do a bit of debriefing today, telling you what's going on in the ministry, some new structures, and what we are planning for next year, share a few letters with you. So just a bit of background again, we were in England and Holland for several years. I did my doctorate in Holland on the resurrection of Jesus. I did a second master's degree at Durham University in England. I did some research at Tyndale House where I was really overwhelmed and so grateful to God for reformers who stood up for the gospel, who were persecuted, who became martyrs for the Lord Jesus Christ. So much work on some of those reformed uh, giants of the faith, Puritans, if you think about what J.I. Packer and Martin Lloyd-Jones did, if you think of the states, you think of people like Jonathan Edwards. And I remember uh, uh, two, three years ago thinking of South Africa and trying to think who are the reformed giants of faith that we can be grateful for, that gives us, uh, you know, a grounding and a healthy relationship with our past. And I remember it dawned on me that it's been completely obliterated in Southern Africa. And that's part of the background why we believed God called us back to South Africa to work on this and try to year after year to do research on our reformed history and discover some of those gold and diamond scholars, theologians, pastors who can really help us to have a healthy relationship with our past and be faithful to Christ in the new South Africa. Now, let me quickly give you an overview of how things are developing and changing in the ministry. So what happened, we, uh, God sent men of wisdom uh, over the past couple of months. We've uh, registered a non-profit now here in South Africa for education and we registered it under the, the name the Institute for Reformation in South Africa. That's like a umbrella organization with four different ministries under that. Let me just first tell you what is the mission of this new institute. The Institute for Reformation in South Africa exists to rediscover, cherish, and expand our reformed history as a catalyst for true biblical reformation in our own day here in South Africa and in the future. So let me quickly explain to you how the whole thing fits together. So the first thing that we do in this ministry is we have an annual academic conference in English and Afrikaans trying to rediscover those reformed men of faith in our history. And we just had in October our first conference, this book, Professor B.B. Kiet, um, a beacon in our reformed history. We are in the process of translating this into English. We had English papers. Afrikaans papers that is already on YouTube we have together with that a journal that we want to publish in Stellenbosch so please pray for that the yearly conference and the journal and the YouTubes that will go with that 
Now, before we go to the second ministry, uh, I just want to give you one short little review of a Reformed Baptist Afrikaans pastor who bought this book. Uh, and, and what he said, I think, resonate with what we were praying for. So let me just read you an excerpt from his uh, email that he sent us. He said, If our ministers or laymen quote any strong, steadfast men in our conversations and preaching, it is almost always English or American guys such as Vody Baucom, John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul, M Montgomery Boyce, Spurgeon and so forth. We do not have reputable, reformed, quotable men in South Africa. I know we have many men in pulpits today who preach the word faithfully and sincerely but not men who write books and make a wider impact in our Afrikaans churches. It stood out quite a bit for me in the beginning of the book, as I was not originally familiar with Bebe Kiet and Willi Jonka. I think the work you are doing with the Institute for Reformation in South Africa is the start of a change in this regard. I really pray for your work. Friends, we are so grateful to God for the life and legacy of Professor Benny Kiet from Stellenbosch. He studied under Hermann Barfunk in the Netherlands, came back in 1920, became professor in Stellenbosch, stood up against the biblical justification of apartheid on the foundation of sola scriptura. He just defended the uh, authority and infallibility of scripture. He defended uh, marriage between a man and a woman. And we are so grateful that the news is starting to spread that they were reformed Calvinist men who were faithful to sola scriptura that we can quote today in the new South Africa. Will you not pray with us that God will enable us to go on with this work, the conferences and the years ahead? That is the first a leg for the ministry. The second leg is a new reformed publishing house of which this is the first publication. We hope, Lord willing, to publish more volumes every year as we grow. Now the third leg of this ministry is reformed evangelical support for local churches and that is international. We've got Afrikaans and English and we do that under the banner of Solar Platform. There we have a number of interesting interviews. We had one with Ronald McCauley, the son-in-law of Francis Schaeffer. You can go look at that video. We got lots of encouraging comments on that video and people continue to watch the Francis Schaeffer videos that we've made. The other one that we found that was really quite interesting was a video we did about the Reformed Church in America that went through another split, the Alliance of Reformed Churches. I had an interview there with one of the leaders. Uh, one of the comments on that video quote a line is being drawn between those who will stand for the truth and those who will give in to the culture I am grateful for those who refuse to compromise now those of you who are familiar with the Reformed Church in America will also know that Kevin DeYoung his church in North Carolina they broke away in 2014 to join the PCA so Lots of things going on in the Presbyterian tradition, also in the United States, and we continue to get some feedback from that video. But I must say, by far the video that was watched the most in English was an interview I did with Dr. Peter Sandlin, my good friend, who has been trying to uh, reform the Church of England from the inside for several years. And that video is called Leaving the Church of England. And more than 14,000 people watched that video uh, over the past 12 months. Uh, please go watch that video. If you are still in the Church of England, you will know that now they are piloting gay unions in the Church of England. You know the bishops voted overwhelmingly to support that. Uh, two quotes from uh, the comments in that interview with Dr. Sandlin. Quote, I grew up in the Church of England, but I am leaving. They should rename it the Church of Woke. Another quote, I will leave the Church of England after 66 years. I go to church for biblical truth to heal my habitual sins, not encourage them. So these are a few examples of the Solar Platform English videos that we have made.
Now, the fourth leg that I want to discuss is a new theological training that we are starting in the Cape area next year. Lots of work to do. We need lots of wisdom with that. And we ask you to pray for us as we get together men who's going to help us to construct a tailor-made, reformed, biblical uh, curriculum here in the Cape from next year on. Now, I want to conclude today by inviting you to become a partner with this ministry. If the Lord is encouraging you with what we are doing, why won't you join with us? Um, you can write us an email uh, and we can give you details if you want to support this ministry. The email is ursastellenbosch at gmail.com. Let me spell it uh, uh, slowly. I-R-S-A Stellenbosch at gmail.com. If the Lord puts it on your heart to support our ministry, we will be delighted to partner with you in establishing and working for reformation in South Africa. Can I finish today by reading for us from Paul's last letter to Timothy, where he's talking about heresy going on in the church. Paul said, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Chapter 4 verse 2. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do your work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry.